So in this video, we're going to start to learn our last chapter, chapter 20, decision analysis. So if you're a business major, you're going to learn the uh, more complicated uh, business decision making at the end of your uh, senior year, I believe. And so that will be a capstone class. And uh, for this class, we only learned some very basic idea about decision making and decision analysis, So which means it's much, much easier than uh, what you're going to learn at the end of your senior year. And so let's look at decision analysis, and we're going to learn look at uh, in this chapter. <clears throat> so chapter twenty, what we're going to learn from this uh, lecture is including how to express a decision situation in terms of decision alternatives, their of nature, and the payoffs. So basically, we're going to create a payoff table. So how we're going to develop that payoff table. And the second, and so after you know how to describe the uh, decision situation, how can you use the method to make a decision? So we're going to learn two different methods. So one is called a non-Bayesian uh, method. Another is called the Bayesian decision criteria. So generally speaking, and uh, make it e easier to understand, non-Bayesian theory means you are not rely on the probability to make decision. So the reason is sometimes in the business world, we follow up uncertainty. Even you have the probability. So that probability might be out of date. So you might not want to rely on your probability. And also in some situation, you won't be able to get the probability at all. So that's in that situation, you should consider to make a decision without using the probability. And so the second criteria called the Bayesian decision criteria, that means if you do know the credible credit probability, so if you hire a consulting firm, they offer you the information about probability. So you want to use those probabilities to help you make decision. So that in that situation, we are going to use in Bayesian decision criteria, Bayesian, uh, Bayesian decision criteria. So in this first video, we're going to look at is how we describe the decision situation. So in order to describe the decision situation, we have to learn the three important components to consist our decision situation. <clears throat> so uh, every time if we are thinking to make a decision, the first step in the decision analysis process, uh, process is for our problem formulation. So we're usually starting from verbal statement of your problem. So similar like the homework due this weekend, if you pay attention on that homework, uh, decision making uh, pro homework, you actually have to read that long paragraph. So that long paragraph is what we talk about here, uh, called a verbal statement of the problem. So basically, in that verbal statement, pro of verbal statement, you have to be able to identify these following three component: decision alternatives, state of nature, and payoffs. So now we're going to look at what is decision alternative, what are the state of nature, and what is payoffs. So the decision alternative are the different uh, possible strategy the decision can employ. Basically, is what are the options you're facing. So for instance, when you graduate from high school, and what are the options you're facing? So you can choose go to college. You can uh, start to find a job, or you can just stay at home, do nothing. So you have three possible options. So those are the three decision alternatives. So that are the possible options you are facing. And what is state of nature? So the state of nature refers to the future event, not under the control of the decision maker, which may occur. So uh, basically, the decision alternative is you can control. You can make a decision which option you want to choose. But this uh, decision, uh, decision you're going to make, uh, the, the outcome will come out, will be affected by this called state of nature. That is the situation no, that you cannot control. So let's talk about the, uh, the, the decision you're going to make right after you graduate from college, uh, high school. So there is a lot of uncertainty going to affect your, uh, your, uh, uh, the decision you're going to make. So let's say you don't know whether you're going to find a job, whether you're going to apply school, or whether you're going to stay at home with your parents. So what you did is you send out your resume to the companies. You at the same time you also send out application for universities. So what is the state of nature in that situation? You don't know whether you're gonna be able to accept it by the college or not. You don't know whether the job, uh, the company is gonna offer you a job or not. So those are the uh, uh, the fact uh, are the event you cannot control. That is called a state of nature. State of nature, and uh, so. Uh, therefore, the state of nature is going to affect the outcome of your decision alternative, the decision you're going to make. So 
Uh, so the state of nature should be defined so that they are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. So basically, when you talk about state of nature, you have to list all the possible situations you, are, you might facing that you cannot be controlled. So that's basically called the mutually exclusive and exhaustive. So the payoff, so what is the payoff? This is the third component you should identify when you try to formalize the problem you're facing. So that is the uh, consequences result from the specified combination of this alternative and the state of nature is called the payoff. So the payoff basically means, for instance, if you chose to go to college, so what is the outcome you'll get out of it? If, if so let's say, if you're gonna chose to go to college, if they do accept you, what is the outcome? If you chose to go to college, if they didn't accept you, would it gonna be an outcome? So that is the payoff, the outcome of the combination of your decision gonna make and the state of nature, uh, that nature, gonna, uh, that, that state gonna happen is your payoff. <clears throat> so a table showing payoff for all combination of decision alternative and state of nature is called a payoff table. Later we're gonna look at example and to learn how this payoff table should look like. And so the, talking about the payoff, it usually can be measured not just about money, but also can be measured by time and the distance. So any other pro, uh, appropriate measure. <clears throat> so let's look at this example to learn how to create a payoff table. So first of all, uh, this decision maker try to decide whether she should open the Rita's Ice, Italian Ice, or Citroen Hot Pot. So if you have the slides, if you click this link, it will direct you to the uh, the, the Wikipedia, maybe, yeah, I can show you here too. <clears throat> so look at the, uh, the Wikipedia, what is hot pot? So this is the, uh, also known as steam pot, it's a Chinese cooking method preparing the steaming pot of the soup st the stock at the dinner table containing various Eastern Asian food stock uh, uh, ingredients. So actually, uh, for this kind of food, it's very popular in the north part of uh, China is in the winter time. The reason is, if you look at this picture, so in the center you can see this uh, uh, steaming, uh, uh, simmered part of the soup stock. So it's always on hot because it's cooked uh, at the, well, as you cook eating it. You can see those raw food. So what happened is there, uh, people are just pick out those raw food, put in this, uh, this uh, hot soup and cook instantly and pick it out and eat. So why this is a popular food in the winter? Because first of all, you had this uh, steamer hot soup in the center of the table. It will uh, um, warm up the environment. In warm up the environment, so you will never get cold when you're sitting next to this hot pot. And the second, you cook food it will never get cold because you cook and eat instantly. So that's why it's a popular food in the winter. In the winter, and so obviously, why I'm showing this example? Because Italian ice usually should be doing well in the uh, in the hot weather, and the hot part will be doing well in the cold weather. That's why the question here here is, can weather affect my decision? So we're gonna look at this case to help us uh, to learn how to create the decision situation for this case using the payoff table. So first of all, what is the decision alternative? Of course, the Rita's Italian ice and Citroen hot pot. So after you identify the decision alternative, and you're gonna use it to label the row of your this, uh, payoff table. And we have two options, therefore we have two rows. So one row for ice cream shop, another for the hot pot. So then this is my first component of decision situation, decision alternatives. So the second uh, the important component is state of nature. Here I'm gonna give you the decision state of nature is our weather. So we have three possible weathers, hot, warm, or cold. And so hot, we have 70% chance warm, we have 10% chance, and cold, we have 20% chance. And so we're using the state of nature to label each column. <clears throat> so the inside of the table will be my payoffs. So here is measured by the revenue, so measure by the revenue. So for instance, if the weather, so if the weather tend to be hot, if you run an ice cream shop, your revenue will be $10,000. If the weather is gonna be cold, and you run ice cream shop, your revenue will be $5,000. If the weather is uh, the weather is hot, you run hot pot. You make uh, you only make thirty six hundred. If weather is cold, you run hot pot. You make sixteen thousand uh, dollars. So this table is called a payoff table. Payoff table. And so what are going to be the decision you're going to make? So before you can answer this question, I want to see. Wait a second. Please don't just guess. So this is the payoff table. How you're going to make a decision? 
So we're actually going to rely on the criteria we're going to look at pretty soon. So in next video, we're going to look at how we're going to make the, uh, the decision using the non-Bayesian non method, which means we are not relying on the probability to make decision. And then, then the video after the next one will be, how about we're going to rely on the probability to uh, make the decision?